What's going on, guys? This is Knasty3890 here. Welcome back to another episode of the Baltimore Orioles franchise, episode 15. We're in year five. We are doing amazing. Year four, we won the World Series this year. We've been off to an amazing start. We're 59 and 32, seven up on the Yankees, who are doing very well in the wild card. So we are easily going to make the playoffs. Now, I did pose a question to you guys. Because our lineup's pretty good. Mike Phillips is the youngster, is really doing well. He hits for a good average. He gets on base. He's a great defensive player. He's improving a ton. Bradley Zimmer's having an okay year, not a great year. He is 30. He's a free agent at the end of the year. He's going to want a lot of money. We're not going to keep him. So we could keep him and just let him go as a free agent, help us out in the playoffs, and we'll get a draft pick for him. Or I propose a question, maybe we trade him and package some prospects to get an elite, elite outfielder who's controllable. And you guys seem to want that. I asked you guys on Twitch. I was streaming on Twitch earlier. Um, if you guys want to see me on Twitch where we live stream the game, most of the time we do like March to October or some Battle Royale and sometimes some, or not Battle Royale, like Diamond Dynasty, sometimes uh, Team Rebuilds. Make sure you follow me on Twitch. Link to that is in the description below. But the rest of the lineup's pretty good. I mean, like Bobby Bradley's not having the grade this year, but he's still young. Mankata, Bart, Fletcher, and then Hernandez is an elite defensive player with 17 home runs. So I want to see if we can get a legitimate superstar center fielder. And Kiermaier is not a superstar. He's in 250 with four home runs. And he's an elite defensive player. I want to see what's out there. So, I want a true center fielder because Zimmer is a true center fielder. Phelps is not the speed. You can't put a 35 speed guy in center. And then Hernandez, I guess we could move Hernandez to center so we can get a left fielder. Zimmer has a ton of value. So, let's see what's out there. Um, I doubt we're going to be able to trade within the... I mean, I'm not sure if they'd want to. Wow, Penitendi. He is the type of player I would want. He's in 332 with 17 bombs. He just signed a long-term deal. Holy cow. In 2029, he's going to make 41.4. They front-loaded his contract. Holy shnikes. But as you can see, that is not even close. Now, if we include... Like, I'm okay with trading Urbina. He is an A potential, but he's 25. That doesn't really move the needle that much. I don't know if we can get a guy like Ben Attendi. Um, like, we'd have to include Rositer, and he is untouchable. I would say untouchable, but it's unlikely we trade him. Joey Gallo, year one of six of a contract. His is front-loaded, and at the end of it, he's going to be making $32 million. We kind of have Joey Gallo light in Chris Davis, but he is a... We're, I mean, we can almost get him for that. Well, think about it. We'll come back to that. He does play elite defense. Um, he doesn't... I mean, he strikes up, but he does get on base. His war is not crazy. Let's see what else is out there. Hmm, nothing crazy. Like ideally, it'd be like a 93 and 95, something like that. I just realized something. If you take a look at the top, look at says trade feedback. If you look at the Cubs and you look at the Reds, the Reds like what our package is more than the Cubs. So that's actually cool. You can actually see that. And we already know about Kiermaier. There's J.D. Martinez. So, I mean, obviously, I would love to get Soto. He's a free agent at the end of the year. Um, yeah, it's impossible to get him, though. How's he doing this year? 326 with 16 home runs. Not crazy, but not bad. And Ciarte is year 2 of 5. He is kind of... Actually, he's doing really well hitting. He's in 293 with 383 on base. It is like a career year. I mean, he is kind of like Bradley Zimmer. I mean, we could base. I mean, I guess we could do this. We could do it straight up. And this is basically us getting Bradley Zimmer's replacement. He's costing $6 million more this year. He is two years older. Actually, I don't love it because of his age. His contract's already... He's already locked up, but his contract's going up, so I don't love that. Um... Tony Kemp, no. Mount no, Smith, no. We're just looking. I guess I could look at. Uh, I missed the left fielders here. We could look at right fields. I haven't really looked at them yet. Hmm. Eloy. Ooh, could we get Eloy? He has three years of service time. He's in 256 with 20 home. They would do the deal for Bradley Zimmer straight up. Get even more. Could get Eloy. That is intriguing. Eloy freaking Jimenez. He has 20 home runs already. He's not a great contact hitter yet, but I think he will be. 
He's already 26 with three years of service time. Not already. He's 26, three years of service time. I would try to lock him up in the offseason. Actually, we could, we could... Well, if we trade him down, we can then just try to sign him to an extension now. We could do that. Um, it actually, would be kind of cool if, like, we... um Like, before we made the trade, if, like, we could have, like, a time where we could, like, try to work out a deal. You know what? Let's get Eloy. Let's do it. Let's do it. He's probably a little worse this year. But I really think he's going to help us out in the future. And actually, we can get maybe like a guy like Alex Conley is pitching well. Herrera is in the last year of his deal. He's pitching outstanding. A 1-7-1 ERA. He is a free agent at the end of the year. It would be like a rental. Now, our bullpen, Fry is pitching. Uh, who do we replace? Castro, who's actually, I think, pitching in the minors. Um... But we just called him up, though, Myrick. We could maybe get a prospect back. Um, Robbie Heller, probably not him. Oh, we could. What are we weak? We don't have many second basemen in the system. Luis Curbelo. He's in the majors now. Hmm, we can get... Maybe get a uh, a closing prospect or a young Durbin Feltman. Ooh, I'd love to get Feltman. Put him in the minors and get Herrera. Uh, no, we can't do it. I'll do Feltman. Is there anyone else like a young another young pitching guy, uh, arm? And I guess get a couple of relievers. So we give up Bradley. I don't know why the White Sox would do this, but they really like Bradley. Zimmer. Maybe they think they can resign him. And they would like to just sign him now. That could be it. I don't know. He's a very good player. But we get Eloy. I'm doing that deal. We might be a little worse right now. But come in a year or two. Now, I'm going to see if I can sign him right now. Oops, that's draft picks. Um, oh, I think we have to go a few more days. So let's get our lineup all set. So Eloy is going in. He's not going to bat second. He's not going to play center. He is going to play left. Because his arm's not as good as Phillips. And Hernandez can definitely play center. I mean, with his 88 fielding, 79 speed, he can easily play center. Now, who bats second? Definitely not Eloy. I'll do this. Bogarts can bat second. Eloy can bat third. For that power, I think that's fair. Let's do that. So, Eloy. Now, we play in the National League. I'm probably He's going to have to play center. Oops. So that is going to happen, but, I mean, that's just a World Series problem. It's nice to get an old name back from our Blue Jays franchise. So Eloy right in the middle of the lineup. So let's go a few days. Um, well, we got a couple too many in the system. Let's just release some. We have one too many on the Major League team, so we're going to have to cut bait. It's probably Feltman. So we will... Um, Let's see. Yep, Feltman. We're going to send him to AAA, who has a spot for him. He has options, so that's perfect. Now, you guys were saying I had too many prospects in AAA, but we really, I mean, I don't know who to, like, take out. I think we're fine there. Um, Pirates interest in a trade. Des Desmond Lindsay and Amos Dutzman, so two B potentials for another B potential. But he actually looks really good. George Valera, he's already a 78 overall. Now, Desmond Lindsay is a 78, but he's a C potential. Elite defensive player. 89 fielding. Um, and Dutzman, I know, is a B. He's a 70. He can really hit, and he can... Mmm, that's tough. I'll go with Valera, because I think he's going to be the better player. Good trade. Um, now let's see what his potential is. We know he's a B. I'm going to send him down. Actually, I might keep him on the bigs. Now I'm going to send him down. He has options. And what was his potential? 80s. Not the best, but I think we'll be fine. All right. White Sox wanted to do another trade. Ryan Cordell, 
now he's 31 years old be potential I want to get to a point where we can make an extension Gene Wilcox he's a catching prospect for us for Jonathan Daza no <laughs> and it's just like oh I know you declined that trade what about now all right, we can. Uh, we have one, two guys in Triple H. So let's fix that, and then um, I'm sending Villaforte down to Double A. Actually, I think it'd be better for him to play down there. And let's see if we can uh, sign Eloy right now. So Triple A, I want a B potential to be playing every day. Valera is a B potential, so he's subbing in. And then in Double A, I want Villaforte to be playing over probably Rotorer because hey, it's actually not bad. Bledsoe. He's a C potential. So there we go. And let's see if we can lock up Eloy. So what is our budget right now? We don't have a ton of money right now, but next year, let's see. Who is coming off the books next year? Or is people just getting cheaper? Like Mankaz is going to be cheaper. Um, Phillips will be a little bit cheaper. No one's going to be more expensive. Eloy will be more expensive. Erasmus Ramirez will be a free agent. I'm not sure if we'll keep him. Fletcher will be arbitration. Um, Chris Day, I mean, yeah, no one's going to be, like, super expensive, really. So, I mean, if we can sign him, I think we should be able to. Just see what he wants. So, he's making, what, $7 million this year? A five-year deal with $11 million a year. So, that takes him to his 31, and he that buys out two years of free agency, right? Two years of free agency. He has four years of MLB service time. So, he'll be a free agent, what? He played 2019, 2020, 2021. So this is his fifth year. So next year is his last year before he's a free agent. So that buys out four years. Um, let's front load oh, every day. Let's put him as a star. Um, and we're going to front load that. Pay him a little bit more now because we can still afford it. we will have more money in the prime of his career. And he'll sign that. So let's take a look at his contract. So he's going to get a lot of money next year. But it looks like we can afford it. He'll probably make close to 20 next year. Not even, only 14 next year. So is is for him, it makes sense for Eloy. His salary's going to double next year. But, and it just keeps going down. And then, by the end of his contract, 8.7. So that's a very team-friendly deal. So I watched some, him get injured. Chris Davis out for a few days. Lewis Brinson, a potential is 68 and he's 28. 68 and he's 28. Yeah, that's not good. Um... No. Bradley Zimmer got trade. You know what probably happened? And actually, that's a good trade for the um, White Sox. They got Libertor at least. I bet you what happened was like, <laughs> at least I'm gonna rationalize this in my head. Uh, the White Sox went to they got Zimmer. They tried to sign to a contract extension because they have that time to sign him. They couldn't come to terms, so they were like, well, we lost Eloy, but let's get something back. And they got Matthew Libertor as a big-time pitching prospect. So, all right, we're at the trade deadline. I want to make sure our lineup's all making sense. And, yet, yeah, see, they took Chris Davis out. That's why I wanted to double-check. And then they put took Eloy out in the National League. I hate it when they do that. So we are winning the division by only two and a half games. The Yankees have been playing really well. We've been kind of struggling. We're going to make it the playoffs in some aspect. Top prospects, Roger is still at three. You see, there's Libertor right here. He was like the number five prospect. So, I mean, at the end of the day, the White Sox, you can argue, they may have gotten a little worse, but, I mean, they got pitching out of it. Daniel Robertson got traded for um, not much. Well, not two mid-80s. Coughlin in just a few days. He's back. Let me make sure that's fine. Yep. When do we play the Yankees again? Not at all this month. Take care of business against these bad teams. Alright, so we're 81-52. and 52, A game and a half up on the Yankees. Are the Yankees still doing well in the wild card? Oh, easily. They're like 11. They're 10 and a half up on the Red Sox. So, when do we play them now? Not till there. So, let's go to that series. Jeez. 
Chiefs lost three out of four to Toronto. Oh, but the Yankees have been struggling. We are five up on the Yankees. So that's big. Um, if we can, as long as we don't get swept, I like our chances of winning the division. We won two out of three. That was nice. Jeez. We're two and a half up on the Yankees now with three to play. All right, we won the division. 96 and 66 won the division. We're going to be facing the wild card winner between Kansas City and the Yankees. That kind of sucks. The Yankees had 94 wins. That's the third best record in the uh, American League, and we may have to play them in the wild card game. That's not fun. Let's take a look at top prospects. Rosner still at three. Jeff Fontaine blew up to nine. There we go. He's our best pitching prospect. Um, let's see. Aragon's at 17. He improved quite a bit. So that's good. What else do we got? Grayson Rodriguez and Zapata's at 30 and 31. There's Grayson Rodriguez in 82 overall. Wow. Zapata's at 62. His potential is going up. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, Josh Flowers. Let's see. DL Hall is at 42. He's an 80. Wow, we got some really good depth in our system at pitching. So what did Zapata's potential jump up to? That's pretty good. That's good. He's going to be a superstar. I feel like he's only 21. He's now a 62 overall. Oh, he's going to get real good. Um, I'm trying to think. So starters, like, I don't know. Maybe this offseason we move on from guys like, well, Maeda's getting up there. He's probably going to be, you know, he had a good year. He's 34. So maybe the, the Grace Rodriguez will take his spot. And then D.L. Hall's even ready. Maybe we move on from Tywan Walker. He's making a good amount of money, but he hasn't been pitching great. So we might save some money there. Let's see how the team did. Mike Phillips at 287 with a 371 on base, 21 home runs. He only stole nine bags after stealing 17 last year. Now, he's not a stolen base guy, but the fact that he stole 17 is pretty impressive. His so OPS went up. His war was 4.2. He's an 87 overall. He's looking really good. He really is. Bogarts, 315 with 42 home runs. OPS of almost 1,000. That's MVP-like. He might have got MVP. Eloy, 269. That's nice. Uh, 27 home runs. I mean, he had eight last year. He got injured. This is actually his first like full year. Um, even though his durability is 86, as you can see, he's never played more than 118 games till this year. His WAR is probably not crazy. Yeah, 0.4. He's not a great defensive player. Chris Davis at 33 home runs as a DH, 257 average. Bobby Bradley had a good strong end of the year, 278 average. Still 20 points less than the year before, but he did hit 25 home runs. So that's not bad. Uh, Yoan Moncada, 270 average, a 383 on base, 27 jacks. That's good. War of 6.8, that's really good. Joey Bart. Now, um, his contact did jump up a lot, especially versus right. His average ended up going under 300, but still 286 with 25 home runs, a 380 on base percentage. That's a really good catcher. David Fletcher, he's a defensive guy. He hit 241, nine home runs. I mean, he's just defense, really. And then Fernando Hernandez hit... 239, which isn't great, but he did hit 23 home runs. And with that defense, that's a pretty good year. It's like Jackie Bradley-like. So I'm okay with that. Um, pitching, Kyle Freeland, 2-4-6 ERA. That's the bonafide ace we need. He'll go game one in the playoffs. Corbin Burns at 3-8-8, not great, not bad. Ramirez, 3-3-7. Three, three, Walker, we already saw, was a 4-5. And then Maeda, 3-5-8. Like I said, Grayson Rodriguez and D.L. Hall will probably both be in the majors next year, and I think... Maeda is definitely gone. Walker's still making like 9.5. So we, that's 9 million we could save right there. Griffin Canning, we got in the Rule 5 draft. A 3.8 ERA is a long man. Paul Fry pitched well. Blear again is amazing. Mirick did struggle, but he's improving quite a bit. He's now an 84. Jonathan Holder, again, he has been amazing for us in the three years. Every year his ERA is in the twos, and he pitches a lot of innings. 99 innings year one, 86 innings last year, 82 innings this year. He's been amazing for us. Edwin Diaz, we got as a free agent pickup. He actually kind of struggled. A 3 3 80 array for him, that's pretty bad. Um, Brad Hand was amazing. A 1 6 ERA. I got a, might have gotten reliever of the year. Let's take a look at some awards. Did Bogarts get MVP? No, Alex Bregman did. Okay, I mean, that's not the craziest thing. And Reese got it. 53 home runs for him. That's pretty good. 
another Indian got Cy Young. I would have gone with Freeland, but I'm biased. DeGrom with a 208 ERA. That's ridiculous. Benintendi got the batting title and David Dahl. Blake Trian and Derek Law got relievers of the year. Jazz Chisholm got rookie of the year. And Fernando Tatis finally made it to the show. Rookie of the year. Benintendi, Hank Aaron. Walker got gold glove. Joey Bart got gold glove for the third straight year. Bobby Bradley got gold glove for the third straight year. Fletcher got gold glove for this. We've gotten all these gold gloves except for, yeah, Matt Chapman's going to get gold glove. Simmons, yeah. Fernando Hernandez got it. And that's and Mike Phillips got it. There we go. Silver Slugger, Chris Davis got it at DH. Sally Perez at 34 jacks. Damn. Um, Rizzo got Silver Slugger at first. Altuve at second. Bregman at third. Bogarts at short. Benintendi, Trout, and Conforto in the outfield. Take a look at some league leaders if you want to see that. Bogarts was second in average. Home runs, he was second. RBIs, he was second. So he was the bridesmaid in all three Triple Crown categories. <laughs> um, wow, we are really good. Team rankings, fourth in batting average, fifth in runs, fourth in hits. Doubles, not that high in doubles, 14th. But home runs, we were fourth. Stolen bases, probably not that high. Yeah, 15, I'm going to guess. Or 23rd. Based on balls, we were 7th. Slugging percentage, we were 5th. On base, we were 4th. Uh, fielding percentage, we should be pretty high. We were 4th. That was good. ERA, we were 1st. Which is pretty damn impressive because we are in the American League. We were Our ERA was 3.54 as a team. The second best American League was 3.81. Kyle Freeland helped. The ace which we needed, helped. So that was big. We're a really damn good team, and we got more coming. Like, next year, I, Jeff Fontaine's on, he's not even, he could be ready, but he's not going to pitch yet in the majors. He's probably one more year. Rossiter, I don't know, guys. Should we call him up next year? Look at him. Or one more year? He's still only 20. That's the crazy thing about Rossiter. He's still only 20 years old. Do we keep him in the minors for one more year? We got Fletcher. Fletcher's a free agent after next year. Do we wait one more year? Aragon is still a few years away, but I'm high on him. Like I mentioned before, those two stars, Rodriguez and, uh, not Flowers, um, D.L. Hall. Even though Flowers is moving up the board, he's already 25. And then Sabata, two years maybe, or three years, he's going to push Bobby Bradley. Like, actually, we've, we're, I mean, I'm kind of going off on a tangent. We're set up, because take a look at this. Um, so Walker's got two more years. I think we'll trade him in the offseason, so that will save us some money. Um... Like I said, Fletcher's got... Uh, maybe he's a Fletcher's a free agent at the end of this year. One, two, three, four, five. He might be a free agent at the end of this year. So maybe we're going to have to call Roger or get someone else. Bradley's making 4.3. So maybe in a couple years, depending on what's going on, we can move on from him and then get something else nice in return. But yeah, we are set up. We have like no young guys who are going to cost a lot of money in like two years. I can't think of anyone. I mean, we'll continue to give Brad Hand those one, two-year deals. In, what, two years? Yeah, there's not really any. We are very set. As you can see, our player salaries. In 2026, we still have over $100 million in players. But they're all, like, great players. Like, in 2026, which is a few years out, we got Freeland, Bogarts, Mankata, Eloy, Diaz, Phillips, Bart, Burns, Bradley, all locked up. That's a great core. And they're young. I think the oldest is probably Bogarts at 30. So, yeah, and, like... I'm really excited how this franchise is going to go. Next episode will be the playoffs. I will see you there, boys. Please drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new. If you do enjoy these, and I'll talk to you all later, boys. Take it easy. Peace.